Alrighty, so it's been a while since I've done an emotion index on my channel, and today we're gonna do exactly that. As you know, I figure why not do do it right after when we had the big Heineken rivalry week, and also we are now in the second half of the season, and that believe it or not, we're only two and a half months before the regular season is over. And when you look at the standings for both tables, especially in terms of the playoff races, it is very tight. Like there is multiple team that is is in the race, and if this kind of keep so as we get even closer into playoff time, boy, we're going to be set up for a very good good finish. And that, yeah, today we're going to look at how every fan base feel about their team as we're getting into the second half of the MLS regular season. Uh, for those, those teams that is at the top tier, they're basically like, wait me out when the playoff begin. I mean, these teams are literally the, the they're the top of the standings and they're, they're pretty much head and shoulder above everyone else and that yeah you know these team, teams don't really need to worry about anything they ju just can't wait for the playoffs to begin uh we're we're in great form so these are the the team that of co course have been in some good form recently or they're happy with how their team is though you know they still might feel feel like they need to continue this good form if they wanted to make it to the playoffs uh the mayor category in the middle as always could be better could be be worse uh the four fourth tier of course they're not having a great time whatsoever it's been a really down down we're we're turn for for them and they're not playing great soccer and then of course the fifth tier is a free fall tier this is the tier where everything has gone gone wrong and that they're sliding down the the standings and then as we are now deep into the season and usually when i do an emotion this this deep into the season there's always an extra category which is the see you next seat season one so this is the one where i think we're now deep enough where i think there are certain teams that they're they're already waving the white flag and saying that yeah next season next season we're already looking forward to next season we know that this season is pretty much done so as always we're going to go alphabetical order and we start with atlanta united for atlanta i mean it you know they did get get a, a much needed win against rsl but only followed by by a frustrating 1-1 resort against Orlando City where they were by far the, the better team for the majority of the game. And, you know, we also heard about the tirade that Joseph Martinez have had openly criticizing not only the team but also the, the front office. And with them sitting in 11th place in the Eastern Conference, now this deep into the standings, yeah, it is considered to to be an underachieving season for, for teams that have, have spent a lot, lot in terms of trying trying to get themselves back to the level that they were a couple years ago. Now, albeit, yes, the entire back line is injured, true to hell. But still, injuries happen. And and I, I know that they've also, I've said before, that they've become one of the most cursed team in the league because of that. But still, you know, this is a team team that, that sh should still have enough talent to, to compete. And I think the other problem for Orlando right now is inconsistency. Like, they've been very inconsistent. Than in in these last couple of ga games, not at the level uh, uh, of their their other their their rival Orlando City is, but in a level where it just feels like they're stuck in this in this uh, vault where they they it looked like things were gonna be better when they get a big win, and then the very next week they were followed by a disappointing resort, and I think that one one resort against Orlando City is considered disappointing. Considered as I said, they dominate the whole game, but they still only able to get a point out of it now uh moving on to austin and for austin yeah they're going to be right up here as one of the top teams in the league second in the supporter shield standings i mean they're thinking thinking the unthinkable of, of winning the supporter shield and trying to do the exact same thing that lefc did in their second year of existence which is winning their supporter shield in their their second year and it's hard to believe that's the case because i think in the beginning of the season everybody thought that austin was going to be a team that that is going to compete for the playoffs and even when in the beginning of the season when they were in an incredible bull run of form many people are saying that it's because of an easy schedule yeah i, I think we we can safely say that 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 is no longer the case because they have been not o only one, one, one of the hottest team in the league but on the road too like they they are they have won one uh well they've been unbeaten in five five straight road games they did get a draw against fc dallas but it was a a good draw in a way where it won them their first ever silverware in in their club history albeit you know i don't know know if if mls would recognize copa tias as an official silver i think it does i mean anytime when it it's a local rivalry silver it, it's still considered a thing especially it's the first time that los verdes has won but yeah it is pretty clear that austin is now in a stage where not only we we, we shouldn't be doubting them but i think their fans will feel like yeah wake us up when playoff time is that's when when it's going to be be interesting to see especially for for a team that have never 
had a, a lot of playoff experience. It's going to be interesting to see how they, they will do, would they actually do do well once they do make it to the playoffs for the first time in their existence because, you know, you know, you know, um, when you, when it's one thing to, of course, do it in the regular season, but it's going to be interesting to see what happened when the playoffs begins. Now, uh, moving to Charlotte, and for Charlotte, you know, I mean, they still, should still be happy. I mean, their fans should be happy the fact that that the fact they're still still in contention. Like anytime when you're an expansion team and you're in contention for the playoffs, it's it's definitely a a happy feeling. Though I'm not sure if I want to put them in the, the we're in great form, and I probably should have maybe said that the fa fans are happy of, of the where where their te team is in terms of the second category because you know Charlotte isn't really in, the, in in a great form. They're kind of in a bit of an inconsistent form where this is a team. That is trying to follow the old for formula of MLS to trying to make it to the playoffs. Win your home game, get points on on the road, and you of course will make it to the playoffs. And for the most part, they have been able to get get home wins this season. And you know they did finally get their their first road win in their franchise history, and almost did for the second time in the last game against Inter Miami before really suffering the first big implosion that they had in their existence in MLS. But like I said, you know for Char Charlotte, a team. Team that I think thing you know I, I've said about how they have been riding on on the 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 new head he coach or the new interim head he co coach boost of Christian Latanzio and that we'll see whether if that of course continues for the rest of the season and if it does you know I think maybe things could be be as good as it is because it feels like every time when when we said that Charlotte of course are 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 in a stage of chaos he's somehow still still able to survive and still look like a good team so maybe. What we thought that it was a sta stage of chaos with the way that after they fired Miguel on how R Ramirez uh, in in an unprecedented event, maybe they, they should be okay. But we'll see. You know, we'll see whether that's good to you. But as I said, short fans should be very happy of where their club is, considering all the many setbacks they have had in terms of roster and also uh, an unexpected head coach change in the middle of the season. Uh, but now moving to Chicago and for the fire, you know, you're kind of right here. And if you're a fire fan, I think you can also say that I probably should have also put a category of confused because, you know, I, I think I think that kind of category just kind of described the Chicago fi fire and their fan base where they're kind of confused of whether or not should they believe this is actually actually a, a sense, sense of hope that they can make it to the playoffs. Or the fact that they're going to disappoint their fans again, because I, I think think so so far in this season, there's been times where we have seen the fire play good good soccer, and that yeah, that gave the, them some some of their fans maybe hope that they can get themselves back into the playoff race, only to to basically have a setback of reality, and that of course course is losing on the road. Now, just like Charlotte, this is also a team that have really started to build up a good home form and get try to use the old MLS formula of of trying to get to the playoffs which is win your home home games and also get points on the road if you can and you know for the fire they have definitely done much better at home in these last couple of games and you know as i said be besides that that collapse that they had against columbus they have pretty much won all the home game going back to june but it's the role for them that is the problem for for this team and that i will also say say or like i said said i think you know, as the thing way, way with this fan base, kind of they, they've seen this before, and in some way, I I think Fire fans can relate it to us Quakes fans, where you know we we seen the story before, where where the team is trying to give you you optimism and the fact that maybe they can break break through and get over the hump, and then they they suffer a big big embarrassing loss to set them back. So yeah, again, I think for the Fire, not only they're in the could be better but could be worse category, where it could be better if they would have. Would have not have the, those those r random implosion and those boneheaded kind of loss that summarized the Chicago for the past couple of years. It could have been a lot worse of, of, of the form that they were in back in in June and May. But we'll see whether that that of course course uh, means that they they can get themselves back to the playoff contention because they're only four points back in ter terms of the playoff line. And if they and with the way that it seems that a lot of te teams this season around the playoff line have been dropping points every single week it that four point gap it doesn't take much for, for if a team can start to go on a good good run uh but now moving to fc cincinnati uh you know for cincinnati i think they're they're like charlotte so far where i think their fan base are probably happy whether they are in a playoff contention i mean again for cincinnati anything thing thing but a wooden 
wooden spoon will be considered a success because you know when you hit rock rock bottom uh like they've been for the past couple years and this fan base desperately in terms of seeing them respectable uh they, they will take it and right now they are more than respectable and in some some way exceeding their expectation albeit yes there's been times that they have suffered those crunching cincinnati defeat but this has been a much better their team under pat nolan and a team that you know is i think the, the last team that that will make it to the playoffs if the playoffs started today and again i think i think so far cincinnati fans should should be happy uh of how, how they've been doing and that i think it's also safe to say that they're not going to win the wooden spoon for the fourth year in a row uh but now moving to the colorado rapids yeah i mean for the rapids i would say they're here i mean if they didn't win that game against the galaxy they would have been here like they would have been in a full-blown panic in a, in a free fall stage because that would have been their eight straight games without a, a win but they finally snapped out of it in that big win against the alley galaxy but even then you know there is still a lot of problem for this for this rapids team and that you know row form has been a problem for them because they're one of the two remaining teams that have yet to win on the road road this season and at home you know they did have that un, un, unbelievable unbeaten streak at home come to an end and then they were followed by two straight losses and that you know i think for the rapids fan i think what's fr frustrating about this team is kind of what we expected a uh, team team that that hasn't really Im improved in terms of the in terms of the att attack and that you know they they try desperately in ter terms of get Get, getting a, a number nine in Jarzy Zardes. And while Zardes has started to find his form, and time will tell whether that's going to continue, it hasn't really worked out for this Rapids team. So, yeah, for this this team, you know, it hasn't been, been great whatsoever. But, like I said, you know, if they can get on, on a bit bit of a, a run in that. I think it's safe to say that, like what I said about how how right now, b between the the playoff line, no teams in that in that in that area has really gone into to a, a good run of form and it seems like they're kind of dropping points every, every single week or every other week you know if you're one of these teams that is there below the red line it only takes one good run or not even one good run but just a couple of games of good run and all of a sudden you can fi find find you, yourself uh and they're near the uh, not only above the red line but pretty close in terms of, of potentially having a home game and i'll talk about one one team that has did exactly that a little bit later in this emotion index uh but now moving to the columbus crew and speaking of th that team that's exactly what 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 i i w was saying about how you know remember when the crew crew were, were near near the near the bottom of the eastern conference and the fans were 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 quite questioning whether or not is this going to be another lost season and even some that have gone as far as, as demanding caleb porter to be fired well, what what a last couple of games that have made a difference of a team that is is now on a seven game unbeaten streak, one of the longest unbeaten streak right now, now in MLS, and then they follow with an exclamation mark by winning two nothing against FC Cincinnati. And I think it's also safe to say that this fan, fan base is really excited about about the ability of Cucho Hernandez. And even though I know it's still early days, but Cucho Hernandez has has started to to remind me a little bit of Chicho Aranco of last season, a guy that have come into the league and have just completely set set things on 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 fire in terms of goal scoring department. I mean, when you score score four goals in the first three games, that is considered consider to not only be a great start but just an unthinkable goal start. And we'll see whether that is going to continue because if that continues, then yeah, this crew team not only can get themselves so uh continue to be be rising up the table but they could re really get themselves maybe even in in the conversation of, of trying to get get one of the top three free spot or even the top spot in the eastern conference that's how good of a form that that they've been in and especially again as i mentioned i did a video talk about how open the east is it is still open open right now with the way that feels like there is no consistency with a lot of teams even some of the top teams in in the eastern conference right now uh but now moving on to dc united yeah i think it's the see you next season right here and you know even with wayne rooney coming in i still don't think it's gonna make may make a difference i mean this is a te team that you know there, there's still a lot of lot of issue that is going with this team and really the only player that they maybe can can get a get, get some hope that he is going to be be the guy that maybe maybe carry this team to a playoff contention is taxi funtas but even of how good a good he is and it feels like he's the only guy that that is doing decently for this dc team 
I, I don't think it's going to, to be be enough. I think I think they're clearly in the see you next season mode. Uh, I think Wayne Rooney this season he'll probably assess of what what they needed to do do in the off se season so that they can make some signings. And you know DC have all, also linked with a lot lot of signings, especially for, former Rooney the uh, teammate and, and some Manchester United. United player, uh, one that comes in mind is Jesse Lingard potentially going to DC, and if he does sign with DC again, I don't know that that maybe could be be the difference of them them getting out the sh the the shop. But again, I I just think DC is in a situation they're they're in CU next season mode, and they're pretty much in CU next season mode ever since they realized that Chad Ashton, uh, good the the head coach bump that they they got or the new interim head coach bump that they got is over, and now it feels like they're back in. In the days, uh, winding days of her in the uh, tenure, where there's just no hope this team do doing well this season. Uh, but now moving to FC Dallas. Oh boy, Dallas is a free fall right now. And this, I, I mean, I don't want to say this is as extreme as what we saw saw in 2017 when you know remember that infamous 2017 season where they were first in the West for a very long time and then they just completely fall off the map in the second half of this season and miss out on the playoffs and. And probably one one of the biggest collapse we have ever seen an MLS team going through, and that it feels like FC Dallas is kind of going through through the same thing this season. They got off to such a great start. Some of these big signings that they made, like Velasco, Ariola, ha has been performing well, and it seems like Jesus Ferrer, who I predicted he was going to be the guy that is going to replace uh, 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 Ricardo Pepe in that number nine spot, scoring goals, and it is kind of the answer and he's scoring goals left and right being a national team conversation and also Dallas fan not to mention they, they feel very proud of the national team because basically uh, you can see that pretty much half of the team is coming from the Dallas Academy and there there was feeling that yeah maybe all the tough time is gonna be over right and then yeah these last couple of games happen I mean they have now gone what a seven game win winless run right now and they have just fall, fall from being a team that looked like it was gonna be friend for the top spot to now a team that is bar barely hanging on in term terms of being above the red line. And again, I think the culprit so far, if you ask any Dallas fan of what has gone wrong, it's the goal scoring. The goals have dried up for, for this team. I mean, Alan Velasco has looked nothing like the player we saw in the beginning of the season. And even Paul Ariola, as much as he had a good start of the season, he has started to, to, to struggle to score goals. And the same goes with Jesus Ferreira. And add to the fact that the defense seems like it started to gone back Back to the, the same defense of last season, which was not very good. Yeah, you get a team that is, is in free fall and that there's definitely some panic for FC da Dallas fans consider of how bad things have gone. And not to mention, they have also haven't seen their team won a game in, in the last couple of games. And his, historically, uh, that's where Dallas have got a lot lot of their, their, their points this season. And the fact that they haven't got, got those, yeah, it's a very worrying time right, right now in North North Texas, the fact that this team could actually fall out of the playoffs, and again, it feels like it's mini 2017 all over again. Uh, but now moving to their Texas rival Houston, and for that the Dynamo, I mean, again, I think for Houston fans, they're kind of like almost Chicago fans, where just as you thought that this team would give you some 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 of hope after getting a good start at the the season, yeah, the unpredictable slide in the middle of the season is happening, and even though they did get that big win against the Quicks on the road, yeah. This is a team team that is is gone themselves back back to where, where where we thought that they were going to be. But even then, you know, I think if you're the the Dynamo, I think thing you can say that as much as it's kind of a confusing season of the fact that yeah, it feels like it's a an, an, another lost season. We knew that that was going to going to be the case, and I think the resort wasn't always going to be something that maybe Dynamo fans were going to look at. Even though I know maybe some that will think that yeah, yeah, we. We, we should have definitely done better this season. But also, just the way that they play. And I think they have definitely improved under Paulo Nakamura. And especially, they have some good good foundation. I mean, Seba Ferreira is definitely a real deal. And also, getting Hector Herrera has really ki kind of provided a spark in this team. And maybe enough spark where they can, can get themselves back into the playoff race. I mean, even though they are 11th in the standings, I believe, oh, they're only a couple points back because, you know, the Western Conference, like the East, is now wide open in terms of the playoff race. And I might even do a video later tonight talk about how wide open it is in terms of the chaos we have seen in the Western Conference right between third all the way down to 12th place. And, yeah, you know, again, for the Dynamo, I don't think it's a lost season yet, and especially with the way 
now that they have, of course, played much better than they, they have compared to the last couple of seasons, I think it's still considered, their, their fans should still be happy. And But as of now, it just also feel, feels like it could have been better with, with this team that they can sustain the form, but it could have been a lot worse with the way that, you know, they're not making progress at all in this deep rebuild that they're go, going through. Uh, but now moving to Sporting KC. Yeah, they're in the see you next season category. And again, you know, yes, they had had a good 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 last last couple of games and had a good the end of June and heading into July. But I think after that game game against RSL, it pretty much cement the fact that yeah, I, I don't think the Sporting KC team is going to make the playoffs. In fact, I think they should should again fully focus on the U.S. Open Cup now and at least trying to maybe sa salvage what has been a really disappointing season with with a a trophy but you know this is a team team that 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 is is not played well whatsoever in terms of the fact that that back line is a complete complete mess and on the attack it's basically johnny russell or or bus and while johnny russell has tried his be best to carry the team at times you know it's it's definitely not not enough i mean there's a reason why in, in soccer it's not a one 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 man kind of team and rarely we have teams that is carried by one player that does very well and that yeah i think for sporting case it's pretty clear that it's like they're in the cu next season mode and in some way they're kind of in a very very interesting situation where you know if you're a fan of this team is it maybe times where you think about about the 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 dreaded rebuild because when you look at the, some of the core players that they have it is starting to age, age badly and that yeah maybe they're going to start thinking about about moving on into a, a, a rebuild though again I think some sporting KC fans especially Peter Vermees don't want to do that because because you know it'd be, because you know they feel like they, they their window is still open especially with the way that they had a good 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 season last year and not to mention next season they're going to get get Polito back and hopefully for a full full season and maybe they make some signing and next thing you know they're they they could be back competitiveness but as of now this season it just feels like it's it's a lost season. I mean, it's been a lost season ever since the beginning of the year when they they were on just a horrendous the start of the season. And you know, even though they have made some a little bit of a progress in the last couple of games, rising themselves up the standings, and maybe just a faint hope that things are going well. I don't think it's going to be the case with the way that you know if they want to get themselves really back into the playoff race, and not to mention them playing some of the mo most games so far this season. I mean, they already played 22 games this season, most out of any team in the West. And they're they're still at the bottom of the the Western Conference. Yeah, that's not going to do it in terms of trying to get yourself back into the playoff race, unless if they have an incredible full run at the end of the season. Uh, but now moving to the LA Galaxy. Yeah, the Galaxy is an absolute free fall fall right now, and I I, I can say that it sends there is a lot of frustration in the Galaxy fan base, and it feel, feels like they they they're, they're now now in. In, in the same situation where they were la last season, except I I've said before, it feels like it's accelerated. How la how this season is similar to last season, where last season they didn't really start collapsing until the second half of the season. This season they they started the col collapse early, and it, it, unless if it, it, it things there's going to be something that could be changed in, in this this team, um, it, it's it's still going. It just feels like it's going to be a long long season for them. I mean. You know the defense, as always, has been absolutely tra trash, and also going forward in the attack. You know Chicharito has now now gone ice cold, and it seems like the only guy that can score goals for this team is Dejan Jovic. And again, you know you, you most of the time when you only have one guy that can can carry your your team, it's not always going to to resort sort to good things. And again, especially with the way that the Galaxy see now, it feels like they have no good 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 uh, defense and also no good attack. It's no wonder why they're in a free fall right now, and it's w one win in the last seven games, and miraculously, the fact that they're still like we talk about how bad things have gone for this team. Miraculously, they're still above the red line. Like I have no idea how, how they're, they're still able to do so, but again, maybe that has to do with a lot of team below them also dropping points every single week to keep them them above the standings, but or above the playoff line. But I, I'm pretty sure Galaxy fans know what's going to happen. It's going to be a matter of time when they go below the red line and that you know i'll probably also maybe do do a coaching ching uh hot seat in index later because you know i think last season i talked about doing a hot seat index in the middle of the season and we're now past that time where i think this is also kind of the time when we're going to start seeing some head coach have some had some 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 uh or feeling the 
the the heat and maybe could could be facing the the chopping block i mean so far this season we have actually faced faced a lot of head coach up to this point being fired but something tells me there could be more especially as we get deeper into the season and that's usually the time when you see some teams that that are clear, clearly out of reach in terms of the playoffs and had a disappointing season and that these are the team that usually trick trick uh, pull the, the, the trigger in terms of axing their head coach and Greg Vanny could be that, that especially with the way that you know his vision of, of guiding this team back t- to being the galaxy of the mo has not worked whatsoever in, in, and in some way they're, they're going backwards with the way, way that they, they, they did back in the first season uh, but now looking at their intercity rival LAFC yeah they're right next to Austin FC and there's not much I have to say about LAFC they are are head and shoulder the, the the best team in the league right now and has has the best best squad and add to the fact that you know when they add, add in Gareth Bell and Giorgio Chiellini which you know they didn't even need, need those got gu- guys to basically add to what already is a a talented team yeah this is a t- team that is clearly in wake me up when the playoffs begin and that's kind of the mindset for a lot of LAFC fans like they they're almost now in the mindset of of how NYCFC fans was last year where we don't care about how the regular season goes like that them make making the playoffs is just a bare minimum for them it's what what's going to happen in the playoffs and that's going to be interesting thing to, to really de- deter- determine whether this team have a successful year or not because i feel like when you look at this team under c Turindolo, oh this should be a team that should should be an mls cup cup favorites and that that this is, should be a team that if they don't win mls cup this season it will consider a disappointment and in other words it's basically an MLS Cup or bus, especially with the form that they they've been in this this season, and and that I also hope that they they better not win the supporter shield because you know how the supporter shield cur- curse is, and it's it's very real, and that yeah we'll we'll, we'll see whether when the playoffs begin whether can this team fi- finally de- deliver that that is something that they haven't done in in, in their existence when they made it to the, the playoffs three to- times um uh, in their first four years. Uh, but now moving to Inter Miami, you know, for Inter Miami, it's kind of interesting because I think for their fan base, it's kind of almost like a confused stage of the fact that, well, you know, are we good or are we not not good? And in some some way, you can also say that 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 maybe some fans are kind of frustrated with the way that they're kind of back in that expansion season vibe where it's a very in- inconsistent kind of team. But then there's also some fan fans what might say that, well. This is supposed to be a rebuilding team. They're not even supposed to be very decent this, this year, but that now they're getting a lot of un, unsung hero in in their team and guys that you know nobody would have thought that would be be a big impact impact player. I mean, who would have thought that Robert Taylor, uh, Leo Campana, and even Bryce Duke would be be a big difference with this? Well, maybe maybe Bryce Duke, but I don't think anybody would have thought Robert Taylor would would, would be be a guy that 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 could provide a spark, especially on the attack for Inter Miami and let. And the same goes with Campana after such a bad start to to his career with Inter Miami. But yeah, I mean, this is this, I I think being you know as much as I know some Miami fans might have expectation that they should make the, the playoffs this season. When you look at how how they just gone through a complete tear down and that they're still facing san- sanction for what ha- for what they did a couple of years, it it's, feels like it's nothing short of a miracle that they're they're in this. The, the the playoff race again i feel like this is a team that is once again feels like it's an expansion team with all the changes that is made and usually when you have an expansion team and you make that many the turnover in the roster it, it doesn't, doesn't always means that you're going to be successful and that that you're going to go through those growing pains and there's times that this team has gone through some growing pains and it feels like now maybe the growing pains are kind of inconsistency but that's that's that shouldn't be 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 a bad thing because you know a lot of the the time when you go Try, trying to build a decent roster and shaping up a core it, it you know right right now right now i think uh, i think they're heading to the right direction and especially if they can get alejandro Pozuelo look like the 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 Pozuelo in the in before he suffer a lot of the, these kind of injuries that re- really is the re- reason why he's taking a bit of a downfall this team can be in the play- playoff race i mean they're in the mi- mix of it and if they do make it to the playoffs i think it's definitely concerned consider a success even if some might think that that probably should have been the bare, bare minimum heading into this season i mean i i swear that some of their, their fans i feel like maybe had some unrealistic re- expectation for 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 this team but i think the, the outlook of the, them right now is that they're, they're having a decent season right now consider of what they 
they have to go through and the, the off season that they had. Uh, but now moving to Minnesota, and this is the other team that I'm going to put right next to Columbus, and they're kind of like Columbus where a couple of weeks ago it looked like it was doom and gloom for this team. In fact, I think they're even short in a shorter period where it, just three weeks ago this team looked like they were in the doom and gloom stage. Like this team was near, near um, they were closer to be at the bottom of the standings than they are, are in terms of making the, the, the playoffs and that, you know, with Adrian Heap getting a two-year extension, pretty much the entire Loons fan, fan base just, just lost it, even hurt a lot of, uh, of people that has gone as far as saying that they're not going to renew their season ticket. Yeah. I, I think those people that say, says that, I, I wonder where is the whisper from, from, from them right now? Because, you know, I, I, again, and I, I will say that I was frustrated with how the te team has, has played and that I, I there are definitely times where I was getting in terms of the heat, heat out ki kind of, kind of movement and it and i will also say that maybe some some that have been saying he fell from day one is going to continue to bang the drum because yes they've been in a in a good form lately but we'll see how long that is gonna last but still you know the the, the wins and and the good form when the team is you, you there's really not much you can can ar argue the fact that well maybe we'll see whether if that is going to be sustainable because right now it is proven that it is sustainable and it feels like at least for for now the attack has finally come alive, and it finally we're starting to see, see this. Some of this attack, attack has has lived up to expectation. I mean, Emmanuel Reynoso is literally, literally trying to not trying to be be a late party pooper in terms of the MVP conversation. Like the number he's been putting is something that we have not not seen from Emmanuel Reynoso even during the playoff run that 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 he he ha had where he really broke into the scene. And also, a certain guy called Luis Almeria is also start scor scoring again and providing assists and all. All that together, you add to a team that is is definitely in the upswing, and that, like I said, you know, we'll, we'll see whether that is going to be sustainable. Especially the fact that they do have some tricky schedule uh, coming up in in their their season, and we'll see whether if they can can get up this continue to get up the standings. Because you know, a couple of weeks ago, if I would tell you this team would be in fourth place uh, a couple of weeks from now, I don't think anybody would have believed that. Uh, but now moving on to Montreal, you know, I feel like for Montreal, they're kind of like right here where, you know, this season it's been kind of a, also a, an interesting one where while they have, have definitely live up to its expectation and that they, they have had some, some good, good uh, resort lately, they've also had some bad, bad resort and it's been very in, inconsistent, but at least it's, it's enough for them to, to be, be in, in the middle of the, the pack and above the red line. But again, we'll see whether if that. That is going to continue, and that, and that the other good news for Montreal, and especially for their fans, is that Georgi Mihailovic is back in this team, and we know that he is the driven factor in terms of the attack, and there's a reason why he is is contending for 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 MVP this season because he, you know, I feel like like doing the, those inconsistent runs, especially some 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 of those games where Montreal uh, suffers some surprising losses, is because they they dearly miss Georgi Mihailovic, and now he. It, if he is back and if he can be as good as he was uh, after he, he, he suffered that that injury that put him out for the past couple of weeks, you know this team is going to be be back into to good form. And not to mention, I expect that's the case because you know Georgi Mahovic is going to try trying to continue to push and continue to to prove Greg Berhalter that yeah he definitely deserved to be be in the call up for those September and October camp in the U.S. Men's National Team preparation of potential. Uh, 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 well, not potentially, but also uh, reaching the, the w World Cup now and playing the World Cup in November. Uh, but now moving to the next team, we got Nashville. And, you know, for Nashville, again, I feel like it could be better and could be worse for Nashville where, you know, like like Montreal, they're kind of in, in an inconsistent form and there's been times where, where they've been play playing, getting some big resort, especially on the road. But then there's times where they... They of course get get bad resort and especially the home form is still not at the, at the level that they they want to to be. Like if this is a team team that wants to maybe be in the top four, then they need to really pick up their home form. But that being said, maybe that's not what they need need to do because again, this is a Nashville team that have done very well on the road and maybe this could be a team that'd be better off if they fit, finish uh uh making the playoffs but not actually getting a a a home field. Uh, advantage so maybe Gary Smith is trying to play for for the chess that the, these fa fans have not seen because if you're a fan of, of this team it's got to be frustrated the, the fact that you get 
to see your team play play at a brand new stadium and they have created an excellent atmosphere there and you always walk away of seeing the, this team barely getting getting three points and that continue in that game against LEFC and not to mention I think you can also say that maybe Nashville could also belong in this category of wake me up when the playoff begins because they have had, had some games where they have, have, have to play play in a big matchup where it's kind of almost winner take all or a, a big kind of game that could could determine what whether if they they can continue a good form and they have lo lo lost those so th these are kind of like almost like a big game ki kind of uh, environment and they have not been able to pull through but we'll, again it could have been wor worse where the the fact that you know because of the fact that they've done so well on the road this is why they're they're in in the spot that they are and that you know for a while they they actually should have gone up all the way into third place in in the west and again a lot of that has to do with the fact that i mentioned before and i'll say it again the west is just so crazy right right now with, with how how the the standing is uh but now moving to new england for the Rams again i just feel like it's it's the same thing where it could have been a lot better with the way that just as they thought that maybe they started to charge up the eastern conference standing they're, they're stuck in that that's that stalemate made where yeah you know that's as far as they can can go they just never able to get themselves above the the red line and continue to make the the run and that's got to be frustrating if you're a refs fans knowing the the fact that they they, they look like they, they dug themselves out of the out of the hole of, of getting such a horrible start to the season largely due to to playing in the concap champions league but oh also the fact that they they just haven't reached their their potential and there's definitely a lot of under underachieving that's going on with that team too but you know again we'll, we'll see whether they can continue to t turn it around in that again they're they're in that that conversation of making the playoffs but that's always the thing that the new england fans were fought about the same like at bare minimum this team is a supposed to be a cup contender not a team that is fighting for for playoff position but here we are you know they're gonna have to try to sell this and hope that things could be better but also knowing that it could have been a lot worse where where you know you no know, they could have been in a situation where they would be stuck where they were in the beginning of the season which is having such a terrible start start to their their year uh but now moving to the new york red bulls and for the red bulls i mean this is also tricky because I guess I would say they're they're right here. I mean they're still one of the top teams in in the East right right now. But you, again, it, it just feel feels feels kind of like if you're a Red Bulls fan, there's some confusion of the fact that well, yes they're they're still playing playing well, and that yet yeah, yes there's times where they got big road wins and also getting wins at home. But you know that that Derby loss obviously ha has to hurt. But there, there's also times where they just haven't haven't looked looked good. What, whatsoever and that again if the playoffs actually actually begin today would red bulls fans maybe be confident that this team can can go deep because the way that that they look at how this team play it was nothing sim similar to the the year past where they just have good enough to make it to the playoffs but when the first round happens yeah they're gonna get run over by my bigger bigger team and you can also say maybe in some way they could be in the wake me up when the playoffs begin because you know again this is a red bulls team that's been in the playoffs uh for for the last 12 year or for the last 13 years or so they have the long longest streak right now well one of the lo longest streak in terms of making the the playoffs but you know again the question is is that is this a good enough team to make it to a deep run and it feels like the answer is no with with the way that yes there's times where some of some of these pieces on on the attack has been good i mean guys like luke kenyas and even lewis morgan at time has provided spark but are they good enough to to really make a, a deep playoff run and i think a lot of Red Bulls fans will say that no, it, it's it's not 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 enough for them to make a, a deep play, playoff run uh, for this season. Uh, but now moving to NYCFC, their intercity rival, uh, and this is even tricky tricky too to put NYCFC here because while it is wake me up when playoffs begins because we know this is a team that is is going to make the playoffs just by the talent that they 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 had. It is still kind of in that confusing stage of, well, what happened if we lose Tati? Because we've seen before this season, season when they don't have Tati Castellanos. I mean, they have got wins without him, but that attack is definitely much more limited when they, they had, had Tati Castellanos. And especially with Tati started to now now hit him, himself on form and have, have at times carried this team to three points like what we saw in the New York Derby. And that it feels like he's like a difference maker of able to get this team to be an MLS Cup contender. That's where the the big 
big problem lines. And especially, you know, there's been a lot of talks that maybe that's the last time we're going to see Tati Castellanos play because there's been a lot of rumors of him potentially moving to Europe and going to South America. Yeah, I think it's going to be... This team is definitely in an interesting situation where while they're, they're doing well and that they believe they could, could retain retain uh, winning MLS Cup again, can they do it without Tati Castellanos? And that it just feels like for some part, for the mo most part of the fan base, they can say that it's probably not because... Because the attack has, has, has not looked as decent as it is. And when you take away such a difference maker like Tati Castellanos. And we've seen this before with teams that take... When they don't have their difference maker, they, they don't do not do do well at, as they, they they should be. And also uh, with the way that there's even some that has has been cr heavily criticized of Nick Cushing. Of the, the fact that he's going through the, the usual NYCFC kind of, kind of, of interim head coach kind of role or... The, the uh, new head coach role where it feels like every NYCFC head co coach always get off to such a slow start and that I think maybe NYCFC fans will be, be, be hoping that eventually things would, would improve but I can see some that maybe say it's not not because of the way way that he has not really got, got this team to, to look like a team that could retain, retain MLS Cup but again a lot of this has to, to do, do with Tati Castellanos and that if he does move move on yeah, there will be that question mark, and there will be be some that will say that maybe now NYCFC isn't going to be a playoff fa fa favorites, but still, you know, this is a team that it's playoff. When they get to the playoffs, it's still maybe MLS Cup or bust. Well, I wouldn't say MLS Cup or bust, but more like I think maybe they'll get a free pass this year because of them winning MLS Cup last season. But still, I think this fan base is hungry to try to retain, retain that trophy and find some success in the playoffs. And again, it's wake me up when playoffs week begins of how the expectation of this team will be but now for orlando city yeah they're straight on having a good time and i think any orlando city fans will say it the fact that they are are, are fed up with the inconsistent then run that they've been in and that they're fed up in terms of how they play on the the road where it feels like every time time they score a goal they immediately go row heath mode and decided to to just just shut it down and hope hope to pray that they can get get all three points or even a point on the road. In fact, you know I know I, I've said row heap mode is kind of, kind of just based on how Adrian Heath always does this on the road. Maybe I would also kind of maybe change it to row Pareja mode because that's what Oscar Pereira has has done, and it's that it's kind of sad to see how Oscar Pereira has really turned turned an Orlando City team to be one well, of the most fun team to play, and now to a team that is just kind of kind of unrecognizable from. From what we saw saw when he came into the job, and again, part of that has to do with them losing a lot of good talent on the attack. I mean, when you lost some generational talent like Derek DK and even not Nani up there, it, it, it's going going to to have the effect. But that being said, they still have some decent some talent going forward, and especially you know them getting some big signing this season in Arjun Kara and also so Facundo Torres. I mean, depending on how which Orlando City fan you ask, they could either be considered to be, be having having a very mediocre season or downright just turns out to be a huge huge bust so far and again overall Orlando City fans are fed up with the inconsistency and you can even even in see, see it too in some of the, the the attendance number like for for a team that is is on an upswing they should not have a lot of empty seats in, in some some of the games and I, I don't care if it's because of the heat that is go, going on this should not be a be a team that that has a lot of empty seats in in a stadium and watching a, a team that is, is now now better than what they were were a couple four years ago. Where I don't think a lot of these fans re realize that five years years ago when they started the, in their life in MOS in their first five season they didn't make it to to the the playoffs and that again that that's just the the I guess maybe this is kind of kind of becoming. In a, a change in the scenery where this has started to become a fan base from being being from just hoping to make the playoffs to now have a t different mindset of the fact that they're now now fr frustrated the fact that because of how inconsistent that they've been in right now uh but now moving to the philadelphia union <sighs> you know for the union i think you would say that they're here and i, I think union fans will, are, are not only happy the fact that they're back into great form and they're starting to not look like nashville of last season, which is dropping points every single game and drawing every single game, game. But 
the fact that I feel like it's a game wake me up when the playoffs begin because we know that this is a t- team that can regularly make make it to the playoffs. But it's all about whether they can, can finish the job. And it feels like every year they have made pro progress in terms of finally getting to the promised land and making the MLS Cup. And when you look at the, 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 the squad that they had, I mean, if they can just get things going on the attack, uh, if guys like Julian Carranza, Daniel you know, Gastag, and even their, their DP signing Michael Rue can, can get going, this team can can be be an MLS Cup contender because one of the other thing that you want to have a to, a team that could be an MLS Cup contender is that you you need to have some good good defense and also just enough on the attack and the Union proves that they can do that like last season they only scored three goals in the entire playoffs and yet they still made it to the to the Eastern Conference final and and you know I feel like that's kind of the philosophy that Jim Curtin has been been preached to his team and that it's definitely a good philosophy in a way where they can can get get far from the playoffs as we we see seen last season but like i said it, it just feels like it's a wake me up when the play, playoffs be, begins and that will that will really be a, a a judgment of whether or not if the union is is have is going to have a successful season or not uh but now moving to the portland timbers yeah i think for the timbers they're they're right here where you know if they would have continued that 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 good form and if they would have Got the win against Vancouver. I would have said they're they're right here where they're riding that Cascadia vibe. But yeah, the Vancouver Resort has really kind of dent, dented their the, that with the way that you know they were in such a good form and looked like they they got themselves out of this deep hole that they dug themselves out so in. And then yeah, the Vancouver re, re, Resort happened. Though I will say that they're still heading into the right right direction. And again, I still believe that this is a team that's gonna can not only make it to the playoffs, but can really rise up in the table, because that's kind of the case with every time when a team win the Cascadia Derby and the Timbers are de- definitely exper- experienced that, albeit, as I said, they had a, a really disappointing resort against the Whitecaps and missed a big opportunity to finally get themselves above the red line. Uh, but now moving to RSL. I mean, for RSL, I would say that, you know, they're, they're going to be like right, right around here where... I wouldn't say that they've been in, in great form. In fact, you know they, they have actually been in a pretty bad form in the last couple of games. But that that four nothing win, or actually not four nothing, but three nothing win against Sporting KC. It could have been four or five nothing in that game. They were they were just absolutely dominating Sporting KC in that one. It gives hope that maybe this team is back into a good good form. I mean, it's in some way kind of been a little bit of a roller coaster for RSL, where it feels like there's times where they've been in good form and a support in good form, and then they took a downward dip, and then they got back to, to the good form and then they took a down or, or dip and it feels like maybe that win against one KC will kick off another good form that this team team is in but you know what they're hoping is that when they do hit that that good good vibes uh under Pablo Mastroni they hope that has happened in in the playoffs and certainly RSL fans would hope that it is and it's I also think that there, there's it's going to be interesting that when they do make it to the playoffs what would RSL fans' expectation is for this team? Is is it an expectation of, of make, getting back to the Western Conference Final? Because I feel like that that is a bit of a re- reach. Consider when you look at this team, they they haven't really really changed a lot from from la- last season, and that in some way they're kind of overachieving of what what they're doing right right now. And that again, and I know they they want to finish the job that they 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 didn't do do last season, which is making to MLS Cup, but. I mean, again, I, I think with the squad they had, I don't know if it's going to be, an, be enough because, again, I think we can clearly tell who it, it, out of the Western Conference are the favorites and can, can reach that, that spot. And that, that, again, for RSL, that's a that's a big qu- question. But, but we'll see, see you know, whether if, if they can do it. And especially, again, if this team can, can get into a good form, especially before playoffs begin, then, yeah, there could be a possibility they can make another Cinderella run like they did last season. Uh, but now moving to the San Jose Earthquakes. Yep, they're right here. And I, I I don't care if they're five points out of the playoffs. And I don't care if some some, some people might still have that, that hang on to, to that, that gl- gl- uh, small glimmer of hope that this team can still make it to the playoffs. This team's not making the playoffs. And I know Chris Leach have said, said, openly said that they are going to, to looking to get some defensive reinforcement. But until if I, I, I see that in, in, in believe in that, you know, there has been no rumors that surround the, the Quakes. And that unless, it, even with some of, some of the, the, the si- if they are going to sign some defenders, uh, I will see, I, I will make, make kind of almost a, a, a good 
a critical judgment of the fact that whether or not if they're even going to be be decent reinforcement because again this this team right now i there, there's many reasons why they're they're not making the the playoffs um and that I, I've, I've said said it before where yeah it's just not just on, only the fact that they, they they always tend tends to give your hopes up but let 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 you down whenever they they play some crucial game like they did against the Houston Dynamo at home but also that defense is is garbage like you don't have the worst defense in the league and and most of, and, and expect it to to still make it to to the playoffs even though I know the Quakes have done done some crazy things and have, they defied the all odds before for but I just don't see it with with this team unless if they maybe make some some defensive reinforcement and it's also safe to say that yeah they're they're they're, they're for in terms of looking at head coach because you know as much as you know maybe when you look at the stats of Alex Cavallo and you think that he's been doing a good job but then you realize yeah that that new head coach bump is now now go, gone just like what I said about DC and the fact that that one of the things that I've also haven't mentioned about Alex Cavallo that it started frustrates me is the in-game game tactics like he has made some of the worst in-game tactics and some of the more, worst substitute to tuition kind of habit bit uh for, throughout throughout the his interim tenure and, and it's okay because as an interim head coach you're, you're just coming in to fill in in the gap but it is definitely frustrating to see see that happen and that i think that's kind of what really eliminates his, his chances to potentially be a permit head coach of this team and that I, I better hope to not 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 see the quakes eventually say oh alice cavallo is gonna look at that look, look doing very well in that stat line he's doing well and we're now going to be making him a permanent head coach because if that's going to be the case yeah i have no hope that this team is going to be be better heading into next season not if i even had some hope about this team in the first place uh but now moving to the seattle sounders you know for the sounders it feels like they're still suffering from the Cascadia Derby loss, and that they they're still su suffering from from the the fact that you know again coming into the Cascadia Derby they they were riding some good good momentum, albeit they did come up with a come in with a, a loss. But it feels like now that they're they're back into to that bad form that they were in the beginning of the season, and a lot of that has to do with CCL play, and that. I think here maybe you could say injury could be a problem. I mean, they dearly miss Raul Rui Diaz uh, uh, up front right now. And, you know, I've said, said before, when you 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 miss a difference maker like Rui Diaz is to the Sound, Sounders team, it's not a su surprise that, that a team can, can, can not do so well. But I think maybe the surprising factor is that there's been times where the Sounders have been able to overcome it. And it just feels like, like at least for these last couple of games, it's maybe it's also a little surprise they can't can't overcome it though the good news is they are most likely going to get Rui Diaz back and that I, I I still think that this team team is too good to to just miss out on on the playoffs like I, I think this team should, should still continue to is going to make a good run like I always believe that eventually they'll turn turn thing, things around and also not to mention it is the second half of the season and we know that when the second half of the season begin especially how with the form that the Sounders are in right now you, you you cannot count out this team like you know that this team eventually is going to make a second half resurgence and well the cascadia derby loss kind of had had, had had that suffer that kind, kind of glimpse uh i won't be surprised they they'll, they'll they'll soon brush it off and that not to mention they have another cascadia derby to look forward against the portland timbers and this time on the road and knowing in the cascadia derby only away team can get wins uh they can win that that derby in august i think everything should be fine for this team they're going to be be making the playoffs and even gunning for for some of the top swan and just in time for them to once again make a deep playoff runs to frustrate every single fan base in mls right now uh but now moving to toronto fc and for tfc you know yes they have made a, a, a big announcement today bring federico benner down from, from juventus and yes they have lorenzo insignia uh waiting in the wing but still they can make all the attacking in, Kind, kind of, uh, uh, the the attacking kind of signing that this team is, but I I, I just think the reason why this team is probably not going to make the playoffs, even if they bring some big name, is the defense, the defense, and the defense. Like this defense is is considered one of the worst, if not the the worst in in the league. Well, I would say one of the worst because the Quakes I feel like is still the worst defensive team in the league, both stats and also how how you look look how they play 
play each of these games, but TFC is not that far behind. Like this team has has had, had a lot of problem in, in the defense d department, and I've said, said said it before. You know, when you're you're a team that expects to make it to the playoffs, not a lot of team are able to make it to the playoffs with just sim simply having a decent attack and having just just an awful full defense. And even if the team does make it to the playoffs, they don't usually go go very far. And I I you know right now I just don't like the approach that Toronto is is doing like yes i know some tfc fans might be in up here where they might be happy because they're bringing big name player but maybe some that need to to realize the reality is is that yes you can bring a lot of good attacking talent and some well-known known name like insignia and benedashi into this team but at the end of the day at, at the back is still an it issue and the fact that there's been no nothing to to really address besides of them getting getting dominio chris chris uh, Don Nico, uh, Chris, oh god, I, god, I can't think of it. His na last name it starts with, uh, see, I think it's Chris Stitch or something like that. I'll eventually get, get it right. There's really haven't been a lot of defensive reinforcement, and that is definitely con con concerning because that's what holding this team back right right now of being a, a playoff contender. It's not the attack that is the issue, it's the defense. Uh, but now moving to the last team and their their Canadian compatriot, the Vancouver Whitecaps. I mean, the Whitecaps are kind of in this situation where it could be better, but it could be a lot worse. Especially of, of how how they it feels like they have started to get themselves back into a position where they can make it to the playoffs. But you know, again, it it it, it started to feels like there, there there's a bit of an inconsistent form that that Vanny Sartini team is going for right now, which is a lot better than the beginning of the season. Like in the beginning of the season. It was just bad every single week, but at least they're now up into the the part where they're starting to face some inconsistency, and maybe they're hoping that by going with the theorem of them continue to improve, maybe they'll they'll hit in in a good form late in the season because right about this time, this is when 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 Vanny Sartini took over this Whitecaps team and really got guide this team in, in such a good form that was the big talking point point of the league, and we'll see whether they they can do do it uh, again this season. To get themselves above the red line but there you have it that is pretty much it in terms of looking at all these team in the emotion index and as always let me know in the comments below what do you think of this emotion index and if there's any teams i put here a little bit too high or too low in the emotion index or maybe put some of these teams that i believe are in see you next season mode even though they probably isn't let me know in the comments below but until then hope you guys enjoyed this video if you do make sure you guys do like smash the subscribe button and yeah i of course will see you guys next time